Hello guys and welcome to this video. My name is Nine Miles Up and I am a real life Boring 737 pilot. Today we're going to walk through uh, how to do the FMC setup. Um, there are different ways of doing this and accomplishing the same task here. The whole idea of this video is to show you exactly how I do it and how we do it at my operator. So this is kind of like a structure that I like to follow to get through all the pages on the FMC. So let's jump into our seat here and get things started. As soon as we start with our uh, jump into our seat here, the first thing I want to do before starting on the FMC, I want to make sure that my emergency equipment works here. Hold this for five seconds. Have a look up at the oxygen indicator and make sure it's not below 11. I want to make sure that our fire gloves are in here on the pocket right here and feel on the back of our seat that we do have the life vest. Now let's get started here. The first things first is we want to check the model, the nav data and the engine rating that it all corresponds to the airplane. After that we want to of course open up our uh, OFP here because that is the one we're going to set up the aircraft from. First page is going to be the position in it page. We are located right now at Echo Kilo Bravo India for a flight from Bilon to Bergamo. Load up the reference airport, go to the next page, pick up the, the GPS left signal here, uh, coordinates and plug it into the IRS boxes. On the route page we're going to put in our routing which is going to be Echo Kilo Bravo India to Lyme. And today we're going to be the Romeo Yankee Romeo 21 Bravo call sign. And immediately when we have this, we can go in and set our departure here. So we're going to be departing runway 27. And as we can see here in our OFP, we have our route right here. We're going to fly the ALS 6 Alpha departure. There we have it. Go to our routing page and you can see we have ALS. We're going to fly Mike 852. Mike 852. Down to Ekern. E-K-E-R-N. There you go. And from Econ we're going to go Abgus, A-B-G-U-S. From Abgus we're going to fly Tabat, Tabat, and then we're going to fly to Moke. And then we're going to fly to Alatu. From Merlato we're going to fly to Beres. And from Beres we're going to fly to Alpix. Alpix we're going to fly to Renta. And from Renta we're going to join the AOA Mike 984. And the next airway is going to be Tango 772. I'm going to plug that in and double check when we use this that we have the correct one. This is Lucille and we're going to fly from Lucille. And then it's going to be the Egg Bill point. That was not correct. Egg Lip. Close enough. And the arrival is then going to be the Eclip 4 Echo into Lime. So we're going to fly the RLS Sula runway 28 via Tixum and the Eclip 4 Echo. So at this point, before we execute or do anything, I want to make sure that the route is connected here. So make sure we have no discontinuities. Go to the next page and make sure it makes sense. At the moment, it doesn't really matter if it's all connected upright in the uh, arrival part. The whole idea here is that we have something connected that gives an approximately tra uh, ground distance of what we have in the flight plan as well. Just to make sure that we are not completely off. Good. So that looks all right. We can see we have a quite sharp turn here in the departure. So I want to put 220 or below for the track keeping for the first turn. I'm actually going to go. So we have Bravo India 371 here. I'm going to go with that. So we have the track keeping here. Um, and then we can activate the flight plan, but we do not necessarily execute it. In our case today, let's just execute it because in my um, experience, that makes the most sense of getting Microsoft Flight Simulator to work. In the ref, and we're going to plug in the data here, we have today cost index of 14 generated by our flight plan. 
The reserves today, we can see down here, reserves we have 2.7. Zero fuel weight today, we have 57 tons. Cruising altitude, we'll find up here, it's filed for flight level 370. And the cruise wind, so the cruise wind uh, we're going to put in is our top of climb wind. So 249, 53, we have that here. And the transition altitude we can put into what it actually is. I'm going to put 5001 here. 5001 just in case there is a 5000 feet level off on our departure. Can execute the performance, insufficient fuel, doesn't matter because we should still be refueling. Now we are on the N1 limit page, of course we cannot set up anything here, but what we can do is make our temperature a hard limit, because at this point it's a good time to take the ATIS. When we have the ATIS we'll figure out that the temperature is 13 degrees, so I like to set it as a hard altitude. On our takeoff page we can set up a flap 5, adjust initially so that it's ready, because it is going to be a flap 5 departure. Good. So now we've pretty much done what we can. So we want to make sure the aircraft is fueled. And as you saw here on the flight plan, we require 7451. 7451. So we like to say that standard fuel is uh, up to the nearest 100 plus 100. So as you can see here, 7451 plus 100, that's 75 plus 100, that's 76. So in this case, you can see uh, for the moment we're landing with 0, 0.0, that does not make any sense. So let's just go to our legs page here, go to the plan mode and let's scroll through the flight plan to see if we have anything that does not make any sense whatsoever. Can you see it guys? Something is up right here. <laughs> There it is, Alatu, 7,077 miles. That's why we walk through it and make sure that we have it set up correctly. So we did not have any discrepancy here, but we do have a, a wrong point, Alatu. So let's go to our flight plan again and make sure that we have the correct one. So if we go to our flight plan here, we'll see that before Beras, it's Alatu. I see if that makes sense now. No, it's Alutu. I keep making the same mistake here. Insufficient fuel is a good thing we have the computer here. <laughs> so let's try again. Alutu this time. There we go. So let's see. Now we're landing with 3.3 tons of fuel. And we require 2.7. Uh, so now things make sense accordingly to our flight plan. So we can see how we have a ground distance of 749. That makes sense. Landing with 3.2 tons of fuel. Good. So now we have the routing inside. What we like to do now is to go to our uh, legs page. I'm just going to go back in map mode. Otherwise we're going to be unable to do it. And go to the route data. On the route data, we need to insert our cruise winds. So as you can see right now, it has 249 and 53 all over the place. And that's because that's the one we set as our top of climb wind. So we want to make sure we execute that one. Because that is the wind of our top of climb. But the average wind is what's going to be the average wind throughout our entire routing. So this one you can see in the flight plans 336 at 24. So I like to just put in, don't need to put it in every one, just every second one and execute it. That gives us our most precise descent one, uh, descent point. And if you have the time on the ground, it's a good idea to go to our uh, descent page, put in our target descent speed, which is going to be 250 below flight level 100. On the forecast page, set the approximate transition altitude. We can even do the descent winds. And all this data that you plug in here is going to be helping you calculate the correct time for the descent. So basically, we're just trying to generate a precise point of uh, time of when we're going to be landing. 
because the FMC is very good at calculating, is very good at giving approximations, but it does it on all the uh, based on all the data you put into it. So the more we put in, the better a calculation it can provide. There we go. And then the QNH for Bergamo. So I go to my ATIS Lime. We can see we have 1023. Good. So that is pretty much the FMC setup, guys. So in short, we started up here on our index page, page where we checked the 737 model here, the engine rating and the NAV database. Then we went to our position page where we put in Echo Kilo Bravo India and we went to uh, page two and took our GPS position and plugged in. So we aligned our IRSs. Then went to the routing page, put in the origin, put in the destination, the flight number. We went to our departure and arrival here and put in the runway for departure and the, um, the SID. Then we went back to the routing page and we plugged in the routing all the way down. And you saw me do an arrow here with Alutu, which can always be corrected. This is why we do it. We know that we had enough fuel, but it said 0 0.00, so something must have been wrong. Found the failure, corrected it. That's exactly why we do this kind of stuff. So we did all the routing, we went to the Lex page and we updated a 220 or below for track keeping during the departure. We went to our route data and we plugged in our uh, winds here as well. We went to our performance page, the cost index, reserves, the zero fuel weight. We did the cruising altitude, the top of climb wind, the transition altitude. We went to the N1 limit page and set the altitude as a hard altitude. On the takeoff page we set flap 5. And that is the FMC setup. So, of course, in real world, this is where we would start our briefing. Uh, and when we've done our briefing, this is where we would receive the LID. So we create the performance. And when we have that, that is when we can complete the FMC setup. So that was how we did the FMC initially, guys. Uh, and stay tuned for part two, where we're going to walk through the performance. So I hope you enjoyed this one and see you guys in the next video. Take care and bye bye.